Hello, hello. Hello, thank you, everyone. Uh, so let's start my today's topic, platform engineering with Django. In this session, I will explain why is platform engineering and the uh, introduction uh, about Django. Okay, let me make a self, uh, br br uh, simple self-introduction. Uh, my name is Coco. This is my real name. So you can just call me Coco. And uh, I'm Microsoft AI MVP. And uh, I am a lecturer in many tech conferences, such as COSCAP, Dani Conference, PyCon APEC, PyCon HK, and so on. Uh, you can find me on Linktree. Linktree, not in LinkedIn. Uh, and besides Microsoft MVP, I have some certification about Azure Cloud. For example, I have Azure Solution Architecture. This is the expert level certification. And I have DevOps Engineer. This is an expert level certification as well. And I have some certification about Azure AI and Azure Data Scientist. OK, that's me. So just call me Coco. This is my real name, real Chinese name. Yes. Okay, uh, this is our contents today. First, I will introduce to, uh, we, we introduce to you guys why is platform engineering and uh, why we want to do a platform engineering. And uh, I will introduce to Django. Django is an open source Python web framework. This is a very powerful uh, web framework. I will introduce it. And uh, I will uh, introduce about what kind of problems we are facing, especially in ML apps, uh, the apps side. Yes, uh, this is our experience, and I will make a very simple conclusion. Okay, uh, this, is, this is a very famous Twitter. Do you guys see this Twitter online? Yeah, uh, this is C. Palas. This is a fa very famous guy about DevOps, but uh, he said, DevOps is dead. Long life platform engineering. Why? The first reason he said is developers doesn't like dealing with infrastructure. This is a very key result because developers love coding. They love coding. They love create. They love build application, but uh, they hate they hate dealing with infrastructure. And uh, when a company grown up, they will. Uh, control more and more infrastructures. So this is another issue. More and more in infrastructure we need to control. So for developer, if we want to make develop control more infrastructure, they will they will resist, they will reject because they prefer coding, they pre create pre they prefer create applications. Yes, so that's why uh, platform engineering is is a better solution. Uh, a platform engineering usually refer as internal developer platform. This is a focus on internal user, and uh, the user is usually developers. For developers, they can easily manage their application without know too much thing about. For example, if you want to be a DevOps engineer, you must know Kubernetes, you must know Docker, you must know Terraform, you must know lots of things. Yeah, but for platform engineering, we put all these tool chain under the platform. So for internal user, they just click, they just upload something, and they can deploy, they can maintain their infrastructure. Okay, uh, let, uh, and uh, Palas draw another chart about platform engineering. The y-axis is control or customizability. And the x-axis is DevOps effort. The more, uh, the more right, which means you may, you may take more effort in DevOps. And uh, the, green, the green area, this green area is a developer comfort zone, which means uh, if you are a developer, you might love here. For example, uh, if you are a developer, you might 
you might use Lambda, or maybe you, are, you might use Cloud Function. This is a fast function as a service. It's easier for developer to deploy their application. For the, it, it's very easy to maintain us because it's serverless. It, they are usually serverless, so you don't need to take care about the infrastructure. And uh, maybe you are a developer, you might love paths like Verso, Heroku, or AWS Beanstalk, or Azure App Service, like this. This is a path. Yeah, you don't need to take a lot of time to maintain your infrastructure. But uh, uh, for internal develop platform here, the blue one, yeah, we, we want to move this blue, the blue area Make more, make more closer to the green one. Because for developers, they, they, might, they, don't, they don't like manage Kubernetes. They don't like manage ICE or uh, self-host Kubernetes or even bare metal. Yeah, it takes too much time for them. So the purpose of internal, de internal developer platform means uh, the, the purpose is Make, make all of things here easier. Make all of things easier. So uh, in, in our company, we use bare metal. We use bare metal, and uh, this is AG server in our customer factory. So we put our server to our customer factory, and uh, we do some edge computing for us. So uh, this is what we do now. So for bare metal management, this is not an easy issue. But we can make it easier uh, via uh, internal developer platforms. OK, let, let's read some text about platform engineering. Platform engineering is a discipline of designing and building tool chain. Yeah, the keyword is tool chain. We put all of tool chain together so that the developer can use them easier. And the uh, workflow that enables self-service capab capabilities for software engineering organizations. And the platform pro provides an uh, integrated product, most often referred to as an internal developer platform, covering a national necess necessity of entire life cycle um, of an uh, application. And the internal developer platform encompasses the variety of technologies and the tools, integrated in a manner that reduces cognitive load. Yeah, this is very important because if you are a developer, you, learn, you want to learn Kubernetes, Terraform, and so on, yeah, too much cognitive load. So the purpose of internal developer platform is to reduce cognitive load. Okay, uh, if you are a very small company, maybe you don't need platform engineering. But uh, if your organization grows past, past to uh, past the maybe 20 or 30 developers, um, an internal developer platform is possibly something you should look at. And the platform engineering needs to focus on what provides real value to their internal customer. So internal developer is your internal customer. And the application developer based on the feedback they give. So we, we have to treasure our internal developer and uh, treat them as customer. <coughs> and, um, and I think everyone knows CNCF, Cloud Native Foundation. Uh, they, they have a white paper about platform engineering. We can see lots of detail and uh, lots of function, uh, lots of uh, components in this chart. For example, if you want to uh, provide a user interface, you can use this. This project is under CNCF. And you, if you want to use API or CLI, you can use this. But uh, in our case, what we use is just Django. Yeah, we use Django to replace uh, almost all of that because Django is easier to develop. Okay, uh, let's make a simple introduction about Django. Here is the history of Django. Uh, in, 20, uh, in 2003, uh, the birth of Django, Django was designed by uh, Andrew and uh, Simon as an internal project in a newspaper company. 
Lawrence Journal World Newspaper. And the, the primary goal of Django is to create a framework that enables fast development of complex database-driven website. And uh, in 2005, it, Django publicly released under BSD license. So you can use Django in a commercial case it le because it is a BSD license, it's, le it's less restrict. And uh, in 2008, like uh, they set up uh, Django Software Foundation. And uh, this foundation uh, maintain the copyright of Django. And uh, in 2008 to 2012, uh, it, it, it is the time of Django to rapid growth. Uh, between this 2008 and the 2012, uh, Django grows r rapidly. And uh, the philosophy is of Django is batteries included. You can use lots of building feature to <coughs> develop the application you want. And uh, in yeah, the first uh, the first uh, Django conference is in 2008, but uh, by 2012, it's become the most important com web conference in the world. And uh, in 2017, Django 2.0 launched, and uh, it it will it will never support Python 2. From Django 2, they only support Python 3. So this is very important. If you still use Python 2, you, you maybe you you don't need you, you cannot use Django 2. Okay, here's the Django version. Uh, now we are here. Now Django the, the version of Django is 2.4.2. And uh, this is LTS version, so it will support until 2012, uh, 20, sorry, 2026. So it will support very long. So if you want to start a Django project, you can use uh, 4.2. Okay, uh, now let me introduce a very key uh, import, the key structure design of Django. I think everyone know what is MVC structure of web developing. But uh, in Django, they call it is NTV, not MVC. And I do a very simple chart to tell you what is, what's the difference. Actually, they are the same. They are the same. They just use different names. For, for database access, they all use model. But uh, for showing data to users in Django, it's called template. But uh, in MVC structure, it's called view. And uh, the controller part in Django is view. It, yeah, in Django is view, but uh, for other MVC structure, the controller is controller. So that's the, diff that's the key difference in Django, just the name difference. OK, here is a very simple chart to explain the MVC and the NTV. Uh, the left side is our user, the browser side, and uh, we make a request. In uh, we make a request, and uh, in Django here is a view. The view will deal with the re request and uh, and access some data from model, and uh, it will render with template and uh, return to user. But uh, for MVC, for, for MVC structure, the browser make a request. The controller do the thing. The controller uh, to ask model to to ask model to get the data and uh, render with render data with view. So that's the key difference. Actually, they are almost the same. They just the different name. Okay. Uh, that's MVC or NTV structure. But uh, in Django, you can still use Web API. That is Django REST framework. Uh, it's all, often abbreviated to Gen DRF. And uh, it supports authentication and permission. And uh, you can use uh, Django REST framework to build a web API. This, this is very easy to use. And uh, it can be integrated into NTV structure. So for us, we usually use uh, NTV structure but uh, we use REST API, uh, we use REST framework. And uh, it, it has a very active community, which means uh, you can get lots of support from, uh, from the community. And in Django, it, it has an uh, admin interface, which means 
uh, you can build your CRUD application very easy. It, because it's built in, you just define your model. You just define oh, what kind of color you have and uh, put it inside. And it will generate a CRUD page for you. This is very, this is very easy to build. So for an uh, internal developer platform, uh, your developer might input some data, and uh, you, you just define model and uh, register it to Django, and uh, Django will generate this admin page for you automatically. That's very fast. And uh, there are some uh, SDK support, but it's focused on Python, but Django is Python, right? Uh, this is Azure DevOps Python SDK. You can integrate Azure DevOps with Python. So which means you can build uh, your own CI CD pipeline, your own BIC CD tool in Django. And uh, you can click the button and it will trigger the Azure DevOps. That's we, that is very cool. And uh, we uh, and uh, we we are an IoT company actually. We usually use edge computing to uh, solve our customers problem. So we use use edge IoT. Edge IoT is a very cool thing. You just install edge IoT runtime on your bare metal server. You just install it and uh, you can you can uh, start your edge IoT. So this is very easy to use, and uh, it, it provides Python SDK as well. So you can integrate it in your Django website, which means you can just click a button and uh, to, uh, to manipulate your edge server. That is very cool. And uh, the most important thing is it can seamlessly integrate with AI team because Django is Python. Uh, AI team use TensorFlow or they like use PyTorch. All, all of them are usually Python. So we can integrate it easily. Okay, uh, uh, there's another five pillars of uh, internal developer platform. The first one is a CI CD pipeline tool. Uh, we use Azure DevOps and uh, we integrate it into Django. So in our Django platform, we can just click a button and uh, deploy, our, uh, deploy our application to Edge server. And uh, for container orchestration tools, we use Edge IoT and the container registry, and uh, we use S Ansible as well. And uh, for security, secret, and authorization, we use Django, because Django have uh, authorization, secret management, so that is very easy to use. And uh, we integrate it with Azure Key Vault. And uh, for IAC infrastructure as core tools, we use uh, Azure to Azure DevOps, and uh, Azure ta and uh, we can install uh, Terraform plugin in Azure DevOps, so you can just build your VM, you can just create your resource with Terraform in Azure DevOps. And the last one is observability stacks, which means monitoring. Monitor your data, monitor your module. So we use Django to monitor, and we use Cosmos DB and Azure IoT. Okay, <coughs> and uh, now uh, we, let's, let's talk about the issue we are facing. This is a very famous paper from Google. Um, you can see the black one. Black one is ML code. Your machine learning code here. This is a very small part in an AI project. In an AI project, you have to do lots of things besides machine learning code. For example, serving infrastructures, monitoring, all machine resource management, analysis tool, process management, data verification, data collection, and so on. So in an AI project, machine learning code, mon, uh, machine learning code is uh, the, the center one, but uh, it's a very uh, small part. So you may take more time to care about your infrastructure serving, or your monitoring, or data collection, and so on. So that's why we have ML apps. ML apps is it's just like DevOps, but it's more like a machine learning operation. This, is a, this picture is from um, ML apps organization. The left one is design. You have to design the 
to design a project, and uh, you might do some requirement engineering, use case, use case and uh, maybe your data availability check and so on. And the, for the center circle, is model development. We, you might do data engineering, uh, ML model engineering, or model test validation. And for the operation side, operation side is very important. You, you, you have to ch check if you are, your model is running or not, or maybe you, the occurrence of your model is good enough. So for operation side, you might do a CI/CD pipeline or monitoring or triggering, and so on. <laughs> and here is the hierarchy of ML apps. If your company don't have any dev apps, you, you don't have ML apps because the dev apps is the very basic in ML apps. And the, the last one is data automation. Your data might be automation, and the platform might be automation. For example, your platform might be uh, scale up or scale down automatically. And the, the, the top of this pyramid is ML apps. Okay, this is another famous, famous picture from a paper. This, the paper is studying about ML apps. We can see uh, the center circle. If you are an ML engineer or ML apps engineer, you, 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 you are here. You might cover, cover the task from data scientist, data engineering, uh, sorry, or software engineering, DevOps engineering, and the backend engineering. So if you are an ML apps engineer, you, you, your task might cover lots of things. So it's very important, but not easy. So the internal developer platform want to make these things easier. Okay, let me uh, self, uh, uh, sorry, let me simply uh, introduce our global edge structure, but it's a very simple one because it's more complicated, com complex, uh, sorry, complicated. Uh, the, the left side is our customer. Our customer is, uh, is from everywhere. For example, in UK, in US, in Australia, and so on. Yeah, and uh, in our customer intranet, they have a CCTV inside, and the CCTV is streaming to the edge server. This is our edge server. It's uh, IoT, it's edge IoT, edge runtime. And uh, we have our AI module. This AI module will we will process the image from CCTV and uh, return the data to our data pipeline. This is our very simple structure. And, but uh, our challenge is customer internet has problem, usually have, has problem, because they are manufacturing factory. They, they don't really care about their internet. They, they, what they care is about, oh, my production line can work, but uh, they don't really care about internet. So it's the first challenge. And the second challenge is about AI model crash. Sometimes our AI model crash. And um, maybe sometimes the IP can, the CCTV crash. And, oh, sorry. <coughs> and uh, it, it happened. Everything is fine. We can find not, but we don't, we, we found, oh, there's no data, but everything is fine. Why? Because the customer is on during public holiday, they didn't work. They just didn't work, so there's no data, but everything is fine. Yeah, and uh, another challenge is the power in factory usually went out. So if there's no power, our server cannot send the data back to our data pipeline. So this is another challenge. And the more and more edge server to management. Okay. Um, what we do first is just build a monitoring platform. We just build a monitoring platform to monitor IPCAN, to monitor edge server, to monitor our data pipeline. And um, after, we, after we finish this monitoring platform, we save two days, we save two working days. Because before this, be, be, before this monitoring platform, uh, we might took two days to find out oh, which part have problem. But uh, after we finish this monitoring platform, we can save two working days. Yeah, this is, this is amazing. But uh, we want to make more feature to this monitoring platform. So it's become an internal platform, which means it's become a platform engineering. Uh, besides the monitoring, we add more and more feature to our, to our internal develops. 
for example, the first one is the tool of AI deploying JSON. If you have experiencing or experience of using Azure IoT, if you want to deploy your module to Azure IoT, you you must write down a very very long JSON. And this is just, and then you, you push this JSON to Edge IoT. Edge IoT will help you, help you to develop your module to Edge server. Yeah. So, but uh, right, 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 the JSON file is not an easy job. So we build a tool to help our developer to write the JSON, and it can easier to deploy. And uh, we we do some. Uh, we we did a tour of labeling data. We can labeling data easier. And uh, the tool of uh, edge server management, and uh, the tool of data recovery. For example, if the customer, if there are some problem in our their internet, we can recover data from the server. So that's also what we did. And let's see our platform. But we hide almost everything confidential because it's our real case platform. So I hide almost everything. But we can see here the the front page. If we log into the front page, we can see oh which module have has no data maybe in one hour. Maybe this module has have no data in four days. Yeah. So if we log in, we can see the status of all modules. And uh, here are some uh, items we can choose. For example, uh, this is AI module configure management uh, tool. We can see oh, which organization, which location, which edge server, and which module name. And uh, it's configuration JSON. And uh, for this one, we, we can monitor all of our servers. But uh, this is market data, so I didn't hide anything. Yeah, so we can just. Uh, Log in to this platform and to see the status of our edge server and our IP cam. And uh, yeah, this, this one is about the JSON valid, 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 validation. Uh, I just mentioned if you want to deploy your AI module to edge server with edge IoT, you might write a very long JSON, and uh, sometimes you might. You, you might have make some bug inside. So this verification tool can help you check your JSON and uh, help you deploy your edge module easier. Okay, so this is my conclusion. The platform engineering is a platform for internal developers and operations. And uh, Django have lots of building feature. Yeah, we just introduced some building feature. For, for example, admin system, you can, you can build your admin easily. And uh, it has large ecosystem. For example, DevOps SDK, Edge IoT SDK, and uh, AI, and so on. And it's easier to develop an internal platform quickly. And uh, the machine learning code is always a very small part in an AI project. We just saw the picture, right? Uh, infrastructure serving, or maybe data collecting, or monitoring, all of them are larger part than machine learning code. So if you want to run a machine learning project, uh, maybe uh, machine learning code is not very important. Yes. OK. And, and uh, welcome to Coast Cup booth. Uh, we are from Coast Cup, and uh, our booth is outside. You can go to our booth and uh, uh, talk with us. Okay, thank you, and the Q&A. And I still have one minute to make a Q&A. Uh, anyone has a question? Hey, thank you. Okay, any other platforms have you? Been chosen so as a shortlist before you decide to use the JSON as the, the your final platform for your IDP. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, you you said uh, quite what you okay. That, that should be I think before the you use the J uh, the Django, Django. Okay, you may use you may have a shortlist of say Stripe or whatever um, frameworks you may choose. So um, which which platforms have you been as a shortlist? Okay, has been chosen or considered to be a candidate. Before you finally choose, choose JSON. Okay, I would like to see uh, oh, what's your okay. process. Yeah. Okay, we 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 consider .NET 
done any call before because uh, because we have another system for our customer, you, they are using Dynamic Core. And uh, as you see, we use lots of Azure, right? We use lots of, lots of Azure service. So Dynamic Core might be a good choice as well. But uh, eventually, we choose Django because we have AI team. AI team, they use Python, and uh, they want to do their own tools. So for them, it's easier for them to use Django. But uh, actually, I think uh, Danico is good as well because there are very large ecosystem of Danico and uh, Microsoft support Danico very much. So Danico might be a good choice, but uh, finally we choose Django because our AI team. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, I still have a 40, 40 seconds. Anyone have questions? <coughs> okay, thank you, thank you.